Hello friends, welcome to this video. In this video, I, I am going to talk about Reynolds number. Right. So Reynolds number, as you already know, it is an important dimensionless quantity in fluid mechanics that helps in prediction of flow pattern in different fluid situation. So I'll write the important things. It is dimensionless and it helps in prediction of flow patterns right so let us take an example of a candle so this is a typical photo of a candle that is burning this is a candle right and here you can see a transition right here the flow is quite uniform and here the flow is quite here and there right so at rule and else number the flow tends to behave like a lamina flow and it is dominated by a sheet kind of flow while at a high Reynolds number results in a turbulent flow due to the differences in the fluid speed and direction right so as you can see in the starting phase in this region you have Reynolds number as low and you can see that the flow is like a sheet right it is like a laminar flow and the word laminar has come from a laminated it is like a sheet right so the flow at two runs number is laminar and it behaves like a sheet a smooth sheet right and here you can see that the flow is quite turbulent right in this region Reynolds number is greater it is much higher compared to the number at the bottom right and the flow is turbulent right so at high turbulent flow or at a high Reynolds number the flow becomes turbulent right and it is due to the differences in the fluid speed and direction and which can sometimes cause this kind of eddies and you can see that there are few distinct eddies and this eddy currents begins to churn the flow and it uses up a huge energy in the process right so there are a lot of energy loss because of this eddies right so this was just an example and you can pictorially, pictorially see laminar flow and turbulent flow quite vividly, quite distinctively, right? Now, basically, when we say the fluid is moving, right? So this moving fluid behaves like a sheet or a layer. It behaves like a sheet or a layer. And the thickness of the sheet or layer can be as small as a wavelength of the light and even lower than that, right? So these sheets are generally very small, infinitesimally small sheets and these sheets slide relative to each other, right? So the flow pattern is governed by relative forces or relative magnitude of the forces, right? So there are two kind of forces that is acting. First is a viscous force. And this force is because of viscosity and the viscosity of a fluid that resists the relative motion of a fluid layer and this in turn translates as a resistance to shear between these layers and the second force is inertia force right and this inertia force is because of the motion of a body right the resistance to change in motion is inertia and it is the dynamic function of mass and velocity which works as to create shear between this layer right so this is the driving force for shear between the layers and viscous force is a resisting force okay so this is driving driver and this is resistance right and let us say 
now we have understood what is viscous force what is inertia force and what is reynolds number right reynolds number is n dimensionless quantity which helps in prediction of the flow pattern now let us do something numerical right now let us derive a formula for a uh, reynolds number and in simple terms reynolds number is defined as ratio of inertia force to viscous force now in order to define or get the value of a reynolds number in terms of some physical quantity you must know what is inertia force and viscous force so let us know what is inertia force right inertia is because of motion and you can use second law of motion that is force is equal to rate of change of momentum and it can be given as m dot into v uh, even if the velocities remain constant you can write the inertia force as m dot into v and m dot is mass flow rate that is rho into a into velocity and v again is velocity so rho a v square is inertia force and viscous force you can derive it from newton's law of viscosity and it's, that gives a shear force that is tau equal to mu du by dy right and tau is shear stress that is force per unit area so in order to get force we will multiply it by area and this you can write as mu du is rate of change of velocity so i will take v minus zero that is maximum velocity minus minimum velocity and here we will take dimensionless length dy as l or you can take it as d and area will keep like this so it is mu v a by d and if you take the ratio of inertia force by viscous force you will get reynolds number as rho v d by mu right. so this is my reynolds number and here we have rho as density v as velocity and remember that it is a mean or average velocity d is in this case we have assumed it as a diameter but basically it is a characteristic length in general term and mu is dynamic viscosity right and sometimes this Reynolds number is also written as rho into v by nu where nu is kinematic viscosity viscosity and it is given as nu is equal to mu by rho right so you can use any of this formula for Reynolds number right now what happens is let us assume that you have a definite flow a definite fluid inside a pipe right so you have fixed rho and mu which is property of fluid and let us say we have fixed the diameter of a pipe or container in which the fluid is flowing so diameter both these things are fixed now only variable that i can play is velocity to change change the reynolds number right so net, now let us say that when v increases that is when velocity increases then there comes a point where inertia force if stands for inertia force becomes significantly larger than viscous force right numerator is inertia force inertia force becomes significantly larger than viscous force and at that point of time the smooth sliding layer of the fluid rolls past each other and then it creates a turbulent flow right so this is a place where the turbulent flow is created and viscous force is no longer able to smoothen it out and the turbulence is created when the velocity increases right so this is the physical interpretation of a Reynolds number and the point and at which the flow changes from lamina to turbulent is called critical Reynolds number and we are we generally note it as re critical 
and this critical advance number is 2300 for flow inside the pipe and it is 5 into 10 power 5 for flow over a flat plate and it is between 1 to 10 for flow around the spear right uh, 2200 is also not a strict 2200 there there is a reliance number at which that flow is neither laminar or turbulent it is in between and that flow is called as a transition flow and it has a range of something like 1900 to 2000 for pipe right and there is also a range for fat plate and there is also a range for spear but what we need to know is there is a critical Reynolds number above which the flow becomes or tends to become turbulent and below which the flow tends to become a laminar right now till now we have derived Reynolds number from our intuition point of view right from a very crude way now you may think that is there any more from fundamental reason why Reynolds number is so important so significant and it describes the transition between laminar to turbulent flow right so there must be something mathematical or something more fundamental than whatever we have derived if Reynolds number is so important then it should have some relation or some link with the conservation equation of the fluid mechanics right with some conservation like conservation of mass conservation of momentum or conservation of energy right and if you look it into uh, if you look carefully then you will find a very good relation of not only Reynolds number but for all the all the non-dimensional number in conservation equation right so for Reynolds number when you see a Navier-Stoic equation right and in the plane Navier Stokes equation you will not find a Reynolds number right but when you non-dimensionalize it so I am just writing a non-dimensional form of Navier Stokes equation in Cartesian coordinate and when I write it I get st into dou v by dou t and v star dot grad into v star is equal to u of minus grad p plus 1 by re of sphere v star plus 1 by fr of g cap right here all the terms like velocity time pressure and gravity are non-dimensionalized and you can simply say see all the non, some of the non-dimensional number here so this equation contains four non-dimensional number the first one is denoted by st is Stroud number second one is Euler number eu third one appears as 1 by re and re is our reynolds number and fr square basically if it is it is like fr square and the fourth dimensional less number is fraud number fr is fraud number right so you can see that there is a more mathematical basis for a Reynolds number and which is like this so thank you friends very much for watching this video and if you have some suggestion some criticism or a new request for making such for making a video on a new topic then please comment it and if you liked my video i request you to please press the like button and if you want to more such well, if you want to watch more such videos then please subscribe to my channel and press the bell notification icon so that whenever i publish a new video you get a notification and you don't miss any of my future videos thank you friends for watching my video take care bye bye